If you've worked on a Node.js project in the past, you might have worked with Express to set up a web server or to create a REST API. Let's take a look at how we might do something similar with Hono. It's a small, simple framework that we can use with any runtime, but of course we're gonna use it with Dino. All right, so the first thing that we wanna do here is we're going to add Hono to our project with JSR. So we'll say Dino add JSR colon at Hono slash Hono. Once this has been added, we can start in our main file to create the basic Hono setup. So we'll import it from at Hono Hono. We then will create an app, which is a new instance of Hono. And then we'll create a small route. We'll say app.get. When we go to the slash route, we want to take the context and we'll say return c.text hello from the trees. So we're going to be making a tree API in a minute. Then we'll call dino.serve pass in app.fetch. And then if we run this, we'll use the a flag here. We'll say main.ts. So if we go over here to localhost 8000, we should see this running in the browser. All right, so now that we've set up this simple server, we can start to build out our quick database. Keep in mind that you can use any persistent data storage with Dino, Postgres, SQL, whatever you like, you can use it. But for now, let's start to create a little container for the data that we're going to use. We're gonna create an interface called tree. And this should have a few fields on it, like an ID, a species, an age, a location, and then we'll create some data. So we'll say const oak, this is a tree, of course. And then we'll say ID is three, species is oak, will have its age and the location. All right, so from here, what we can do is create a few different helper functions that are going to help us interact with local storage. So what we'll do here is we'll create a function called set item. This is going to take in a key, which is a string and a value, which is of type tree. And then this should set in local storage using the set item function, the key, and then we'll json.stringify whatever the value is. So this is going to handle the types, but it's also going to make sure that the right fields and values are sent in. So next up, we will say const get item and we'll say key is a string, tree or null. And then we'll say that the item is whatever local storage dot get item returns with that key. And then we'll say return. If there's an item, we want to parse it as JSON. Otherwise we run a return null. Let's just give it a little test here. We'll say set item and remember it's taking in the key of what we want to set and then the value which is whatever the tree is so we'll say trees underscore oak dot id and then the other value will be oak then we'll say const new tree equals get item trees underscore oak.id and then we'll console log that new tree. Okay, so we're getting the item, we're setting the item. So let's go ahead and stop the app, we'll run it again, dino a main.ts. The first thing it's going to do is to console log that new tree that's been added. So, so far so good. We can also use set item to update the record so that if the key already exists, then the value is going to be updated. So let's do something like this. Maybe we'll change the age to four. We'll give that a save. We'll stop and restart. 
And now our item has been set with the new age. Okay, so those are the bones of what we're gonna do, but now it's time to use Hono's routing to create some REST API routes now that we understand how to work with these methods. So what we'll do beneath here is we're gonna say app.post. So anytime we post to the trees route, we wanna call this function. It's going to be an async function that takes in that context. We're gonna say tree details await c.request.json. Then we're going to say tree, which is of type tree, should be equal to those tree details. Then we'll call set item. So here we'll say trees tree.id comma tree. And then we'll say return c.json. And then we'll add a message here. We just added a tree.species tree. Okay, so now that we have that in place, we're going to send a curl request. You can type this from scratch. You could use Postman or your favorite API testing tool. I will just type it all out and then we'll say headers, content type application slash JSON. The data should be two. The species is a willow tree and the age is 100. Location is Juniper Park. And then we want to make sure that that whole thing is wrapped in single quotes. And then the message that we get back is we just added a willow tree. To prove that we created that tree, let's get the data by its ID. So we're going to do this. We'll say app.get slash trees ID. This is another async function that we're going to use to grab the ID. So we'll say await c.request param ID. Then we'll say const tree equals get item trees ID. And then we'll say if no tree is found, tree not found. And then we'll add a 404 there. Outside of that set of curly braces, we'll return the data if it exists. Now, if we make sure that this thing is running with those changes, we're going to go to our trees three, and we should see that is there. Trees two has our latest one. All right, so we also wanna be able to handle these updates, which we should do with a put request. We'll say trees ID async const ID equals C dot request param ID. Then let's destructure the species, age, and location from that response. So we'll say await C dot request dot JSON. We should add that await there too. Next, let's go ahead and say updated tree is of type tree, ID, species, age, location. That's just another way to do that. You could have done that up here on line 38 as well. All right, so now that we have that, we can set the item, trees ID, and we'll pass along updated tree. And now we'll say return c.json tree has changed. And then if you wanted to say location, species, age, something like that, you could. All right, so let's go ahead and add that curl request. This time it's going to be a put request to a particular route, a particular endpoint. So we'll change some data about this number two here. So we'll say put, and the ID will say the same. We'll say the age is 301. Happy birthday to that tree. And then the tree has been moved to Legacy Park. All right, so now if we hit enter, all of these details have changed. If we go to the browser, we can see the most recent details as well. Finally, 
this is a CRUD application. We need the delete here. So we'll say app delete trees ID async. Now this time we're going to delete based on that ID. So we need to grab it from the request parameters. So we also need a way of interacting with the local storage item. So we'll say delete item key is a string local storage dot remove item key and now we can use that here delete item trees underscore id return c dot json message tree id has been cut down that is the saddest thing ever but let's run it again and we don't even need this part right no more data it knows because of this too so let's hit enter tree 2 has been cut down refresh tree not found so we've used dino in combination with hono to build a little rest api for our tree data if we wanted to deploy this, we could deploy with zero configuration to Dino deploy. Everything would just work right away. Or we could deploy it using the official Docker image over here at Dino land slash Dino underscore Docker. You could deploy to AWS, Google Cloud Platform, DigitalOcean, or whatever your favorite cloud provider is.